In the last video, we discussed about what is surveying and the classification of surveying. And we ended the video with three methods that is linear measurements, angular measurements and graphical methods. This is lecture 2 of surveying and geomatics. In this lecture, we will talk about linear methods of surveying and what are the instruments involved in surveying. So let us discuss what is linear measurement. In linear measurement, what we do is we measure the length of two points. That is, the horizontal measurement is what we do. So let us discuss what are the different methods employed based on the different instruments that we use. The first one is pacing. What happens in pacing is if we have to measure from point A to point B, the distance AB we have to find, then what happens is a person starts walking from A to B. Then the distance AB is given by the length of one pace into number of paces. That is, if we know the number of paces we made and if we know the length of one pace we made, then we get the total distance A. The second method is passometer. The passometer is more or less similar to pacing. What happens here is, in passometer, we don't have to calculate the number of paces we make. It uses an electronic equipment and it counts the paces on its own. So, it's similar to pacing, but we have to walk from point A to point B, but we don't have to count the number of paces. Just the electronic equipment does this on its own. So, this is what is passometer. This passometer is what we find in all of our smartwatches. The third equipment that we use is a parameter or an odometer. These are two different equipments but similar. A parameter consists of a wheel, that is a circular wheel with a handle. And the parameter also has a display or electronic part where it calculates the distance. What happens is if we know the radius of this wheel, we can find out the circumference. If we move this wheel over this wheel rotates and we calculate the number of revolutions made by this wheel and if we know the circumference, the distance can be calculated. That is, the number of revolutions into the circumference. This is how the parameter works. The odometer is the same principle that we use in an automobile. So the next method of linear measurement is chain. In chain, we use a normal chain. There are different types of chain available. Based on the purpose, we use a different type of chain. The most commonly used chain is metric chain. That is what we use or see in our lab. The metric chain is available in length of 5 meter, 10 meter, 20 meter and 30 meter. So what is a metric chain? You see this figure. This is a figure for a metric chain. Most of us have used a metric chain in our lab in our first year, right? So a metric chain is made up of galvanized mild steel. Or it is normally normal mild steel, that is low carbon steel material. A metric chain also has the circular loops over here. The circular loops holds each link together. So what is a link? A link is a measure of distance. A link is a center to center distance between the middle rings. That is, this is the middle ring and this is another middle ring. So the distance between these two middle rings is known as one link or is 20 cm in length. So a link is the distance between two middle rings. It is 20 cm length in case of a metric chain. So metric chain is made up of galvanized mild steel. It has a brass handle and a swell joint. Swell joint it rotates at this point and also it has links. These links is the distance between the middle rings of two different wires. This is one steel wire, this is another steel wire. They are connected together in with the help of these middle rings and the distance between these middle rings is known as one link. So, in a one meter chain, how many links will be there? If one link is 20 centimeter, in a one meter chain there will be five links, right? So, what are the different types of chain? The first one is metric chain that we have seen right now. The second one is gunter's chain. We 
we have to learn the distance or the length of each type of chain that is available. So, the second one is contour chain. A contour chain is also known as a survey chain. So, a contour chain is normally 66 feet in long and it grows about 100 legs. And the next type is engineer chain. The engineer chain is 100 feet long and each leg is 1 feet in length. So, we ha just have to know the different types, the names and the lengths of it. And the next type is revenue chain. A revenue chain is 33 feet long. So, this is what we use in a normal revenue operation. So that is when we have to divide a land, a piece of land, we use a revenue chain. And the last one is steel bands. That is not particularly used every day. A steel band is a narrow strip of steel that is actually 20 to 30 meter in length and also about 12 to 16 mm in breadth. So, these are the different types of linear measurements that comes under chain. So what is ranging? Ranging is a process of establishing intermediate stations in line with a chain line. That is, if you measure a length using a chain or maybe a tail, then if we have to provide intermediate points due to some reason that we will discuss, then that process is known as ranging. That is, we have to provide intermediate points in the same line as a chain length. There are two methods, that is direct and indirect. We can understand the same using this figure. So the first method is the direct ranging. Direct ranging is used when the stations are intervisible. That is, we have two stations, that is A and B. What we have to do is, we have to measure the length of AB. The problem is, we know a normal chain is maximum maybe 30 meter. In our lab, we have a 30 meter chain. So, if this length we have to measure is greater than 30, that is, we can't measure with one chain. So, first we have to measure from here to some point, say 30 meter. Then, from here, we have to remove this chain and put it up again. Then, measure another 30 meter and so on. Until we reach point B. But the problem is, while doing this, we don't know whether we are following the same A to B in a straight line. That is when we make mistakes. So, in that point, what we do is, we use a direct ranging. In direct ranging, what we do is, we provide an intermediate point. That is, whenever one chain length is used up, we provide an intermediate point. That is what is called a ranging. And this point, say, let us say P. And we provide a raising rod over here. A raising rod is used and it is placed over point P. And a raising rod also is placed in point A and point B. After placing the raising rod in all these positions, what we do is a person will stand in point B and another person will stand in point A and they will correct the point P. That in such a way that when we look from this point, when we look from this point, all these ring rods lie in the same line. So that we know that point B is in a straight line with AB. That is how we do direct range. We provide an additional point or an intermediate point when the whole length is greater than one chain length and so that that point lies in line with a chain line. That is the straight line with chain line. So, so that, therefore there is no mistake in the measurement that we are doing. So what is the next method? That is indirect method. The direct method is when the stations are intervisible. That is A and point B are visible to each other. The indirect training, what we do is, the points A and B are not visible to each other. In that point, A and B are not intervisible. There is some obstruction in between, like a hill or a mountain. So what we do is, we provide, that is, stations are not intervisible. Therefore, we provide additional points, let us say M and N. By providing such points randomly, we cannot say that they are the same chain line, they are the same straight line. Although there is a distance like this, it is a curved distance, we don't know whether they are in a straight line. So we have to fix these points. Therefore, indirect ranging is the method that we use when stations are not intervisible, and also we have to fix two additional points, maximum two is required. Uh, two additional points so that they are the same chain line with A and B. We also use a ranging rod over here and here, and another ranging rod over A and another ranging rod over B. Then we have to fix the position of M and N such that they are the same line. 
This method is also known as reciprocal routing. So routing is the process of establishing intermediate station in the same train line. And there are two methods, direct and indirect. Direct method is used when stations are intervisible. Indirect method is used when stations are not intervisible. Indirect method is also known as reciprocal routing.